Hello everybody, welcome back to JLEG 3 d So today we're going to be working on an interesting little project that was requested by a user called Wall Panels. And this is going to be in parametric, so I called it Wall Panels Unlimited. Alright, so what we're going to start off by doing is make a sketch. Let's do a line. Let's make it 10 by 10 for easy counting. And go all the way around. And then make sure you lock that point into place. And select all of it and select horizontal vertical here on the right. All right, once we have that, it's very basic. We just want to make a spline because we're going to have an interesting shape. And we want to have a an even number of, let's say, segments so that they connect on the other side. So let's make four. All right, and let's just make a randomized kind of pattern here. Randomized and similar at the same time. So this is just a wavy wall panel okay and then what I want to do is go ahead and extrude every other one let's say by one for this example then go to the items menu unhide the sketch and then extrude the other two let's do by 1.5 just so we have that big gap to see what we're doing all right then what I want to do is go ahead and select it all by click and dragging click union usually if it pops up as more but it probably selected the sketch too so let's hide that real quick and then select it and then click union here on the left or you could have also went to tools and union and then dragged it like so all right just giving you options once we have that what i want to do is for a reference i want to copy this up by 10 inches and just to make this as uh, aligned as possible i want to go back to the history and select that sketch and then select my front plane and then what I want to do is move those over to those edges there to line them up. Oh, make sure you actually undo that. So undo once. And then make sure you don't have them all selected when you're doing this. So it's just one at a time. So once you finish one, deselect it and then go on to the next one after that. So if you deselect, just click that sketch again. All right, and then exit sketching, click sketch just to deselect because I usually just click on the outside here to deselect but sometimes it's easier to do another way if you're already zoomed in like crazy all right but once we have that as you can see we have these lined up with those and if we go to the bottom here those are lined up as well and what I want to do is delete this thing so I don't want that in the history there let's say I want to delete all those I click select then select all those three click delete and then technically, even if we move this up here, it should still stay, see? So we deleted the history, so we hit our stuff, right? No. But uh, it's still there, the movement. So what we can do now is using the pattern tool. So let's say this is a wall that we have, and we want them to go across here and across there. So we can go back to the pattern now. So tools, or rather transform, pattern, select our object actually you know what before we do that so we can make it colorful let's go ahead and do uh, tools visualize and select these edges just to give you a clear cut example of what this is going to achieve all right let's make those blue and then go back to modeling and then go to transform pattern double click your item then make sure you have spacing on and not distance. Remember, we did 10 inches, so that's going to make it easier for us to count. So 10 for spacing. And then go up as well. And the same thing for 10 in spacing. And now we can basically go up, let's say we want a tall wall and a wide wall. And now we have basically a giant wall pattern. And it's fairly continuous. So this is kind of like a uh, texture. Uh, for 3d modeling see so we can go around that and you can also do the sideways ones of course but you'll have to match the side so if you want to do a pattern that goes to the side it's going to be a little bit more difficult but if you watch my pattern tutorial it is a possibility right so if you do this then you would have to fill that gap with something right it can't be empty space but this is basically a little quick overview of how to do this and the fun thing about this specific situation is you can always go back and make an edit and it will change all of them so this is parametric and as you can see now we've changed the whole thing 
if we don't want them to be aligned. So changing your initial sketch, it's like a chain reaction to the rest of your object. So let's go ahead and exit sketch mode just to show you. So see, we've changed it and now we just undo. If it does it, and there we go. And we go back to our wavy pattern. So this is one thing. And then you can always make this a straight line. But if you change the process fundamentally, it will have you will have to redo some steps. So for example, if I want this absolutely straight instead of a spline, then I would obviously have to redo that or at least attempt to make my spline as straight as possible, which would be very difficult in this state. Okay, so just FYI, well, that's easier than I thought. It kind of automatically went in there, but as you can see, now we have that as a straight piece. And it's a bit slow because I'm on my iPad, but as it is possible, as you can see. So just FYI, there's lots of options, but you have to really plan ahead with parametric. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot more work later instead of up front as we have with direct CAD modeling. So this is it. Hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have it in your heart, don't forget to become a member and support my work. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.